As you can see, we've got Premiere Pro open here. We're gonna test footage all the way from 4K to 12K and see how does this $600 Mac Mini hold up? Is it any good for video editing and so on? Because it's very, very budget friendly. I'm running a competition on these Mac Minis as well as this 13600K CPU. And if you wanna get one of these for a quid or a dollar, then uh, stick till the end of the video to learn more. CCL is the place for your creator PC needs. Their wide range of products offer extremely competitive pricing. And in fact, in my experience, I have found that CCL's price is the best price on the market. There's also a 0% interest purchase option available to spread the costs. Use the code TN10 to get a special discount when spending over 250 pounds. Check out CCL and their latest pricing in the video description below. So this is Premiere Pro 23.1, the latest version available, and this is running not through Rosetta. So this is actually native version here. We've got timeline here, 4K, 420, 60 frames per second, hitch 264, 8 bit. 60 frames per second. Let's have a look. Zero frames dropped right now, okay? By the way, this is a 256 gigabyte model and eight gigabyte model. So it's only got eight gigabytes of unified memory. The playback is quite all right. Bear in mind, this is full resolution of 4K 60 frames per second. Timeline is pretty okay as well. Not as good as I would see in some of the higher end PC workstations but they'd cost many many times this so i'm not expecting that now let's put a bit of color grade on let's see if it can do that and how does the gpu work there so it does drop a few frames 24 yep it is constantly dropping frames when we're playing this back even 4 to 0 8 bit 60 frames per second but i don't actually visually see it with my eyes the footage looks smooth to me there but it is dropping frames. So this is 10 bit 4 to 0, 24 frames per second, it's a 264. Okay, full resolution, timeline very, very smooth there. I'm gonna put the color grade on as well and now press play. And as you can see, now we're dropping zero frames because the 60 frames per second was a bit hard for it to play back. But 24 frames per second, 25, 30 frames per second, probably completely fine. As you can see, this is 10 bit, 30 frames per second now. And this is 422. Okay, this is good. This is very, very good. Look at that M2. There is 85% utilized, but we're dropping zero frames and we've got color grade on there. This is super, super smooth. Okay. I think this is now how the encoders actually work. Oh, this is amazing. This is absolutely buttery smooth at full resolution. I'm absolutely amazed by this. That's fantastic. So this is 10 bit 422 4K 25 frames per second. Here's a 264. I'm going to press play with the color grade. Plays back no problem. Scrubbing through is pretty all right as well. As good as it's really going to get. I mean, I'm quite impressed that this is only $600. This is quite... Quite good there. Now this is all IntraClip XAVSI, so from Sony A7S3. Full resolution, 25 frames per second with the color grade. Supery, buttery, smooth, supery. Very, very good. Even though it is dropping some frames. Now it's not dropping any frames. Now this is 60 frames per second, 4 to 2, 10 bit. And yeah, now we're dropping quite a lot of frames. Timeline is not that bad with the color grade, but we are dropping quite a bit of frames. You can, you can feel it's a bit laggy. Without the color grade, it does. Well, it kind of plays it back. Interestingly, it shows that the, the graphics is 0% utilized. Okay, 50% now. I guess it's not quite doing what it's meant to be doing. Now this is H.265, so high efficiency codec. We're gonna press play, this is 50 frames per second, 420. And as you can see, with the color grade, we're dropping zero frames, playing back full resolution, 50 frames per second. That is really, really good. Timeline performance, very, very nice and smooth. 
So I bet this is going to be played back on the actual encoders of the M2 chip. This is pretty good for... $600 machine, that's very good. 26 frames dropped, 27. So time to time it does drop frames, but like... This is full resolution, so I'm happy with the performance. Now, I'm very curious about this one because this is H.265, 4K, 60 frames per second, 10-bit, 422. This is usually uh, what like breaks computers and even Threadrippers can't play it back properly just because it's very, very hard to play that back. And as you can see, our graphics is 100% utilized. So we are absolutely maxing this out here now. Yeah, we're dropping a lot of frames. Let's see without the color grade. Okay, without the color grade, we're kind of okay. And we're not dropping any frames. And it's very, very smooth timeline, actually. So it is played back on the encoder of the of the media engines inside there, H.264 and 5. Because that is very, very smooth. Full resolution, H.265, 422. That is, that's, that's really, 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 really good. It's just the graphics that can't quite keep up with the color grade when that is on top. But the timeline is like buttery, buttery smooth. Like it's not going to get any better than that. That feels extremely smooth to me. So I'm very, very happy with that. So this is Canon C200, 4K, 60 frames per second. DCIE 4K, by the way, and we're not playing this back. This is Canon RAW, and it's not very good. Pressing play, yeah, we're losing a lot of frames, so it's no good for that. This is 4K Red RAW. Timeline performance is very, very smooth. Let's press play, and that's with the color grade as well. We're playing this back, zero frames dropped. So I'm very happy with 4K Red RAW. It's super, super smooth. Now this is 120 frames per second. Let's see how we're doing here. 4 to 0, 8 bit, H.264. It's, it's all right. 4 to 2, 10 bit. Let's see what this is doing here. Yeah, we're dropping a ton and ton of footage and frames. This is H.265, 4 to 0, 10 bit. 120 frames per second. Thailand, it's it's okay. It's keeping up quite well actually compared to some of the higher end PCs that we're, we're building here. Bear in mind, this is full resolution with the color grade. Let's take the color grade off. Let's see now then. Yeah, still dropping a lot of frames. Even this here, yeah. There we go. So 120 frames per second. It's okay if you want to go like half the resolution or something like that, but not full resolution. 5K red draw. That is not happening there. Let's see without color grade. Nope. Can't do. Let's see this 6K red draw. Pressing play. Yeah, we're losing a ton of frames. This is not smooth at all. Even without the color grade. 6K B-Raw. It's quite smooth. Two clips, three clip. I mean, two clips on top of each other. See, it can't play it back again. Dropping flame, frames and flames. Bear in mind, I don't have the color grade on. And it's really, really struggling to play back 6K clip there. Never mind three 6K clips on top of each other. Proper slideshow, can't do anything about that. 8K Canon RAW, half the resolution. Okay, it's completely lagging and crashing now here with the with the 8K Canon RAW. 
Let's see if we can get 8k red raw going. Okay, let's take the color grade off first because no one's gonna go doing that. Half the resolution here, timeline literally inaccessible. Nope. Okay. So then, is this Mac Mini M2 base model with just $600 any good for video editing? I was actually surprised with some of the 4K footage there, okay? If you're using purely mirrorless camera footage, then I think you're gonna be quite okay actually doing it. You might have longer export times and it doesn't have as good of encoders as, you know, some of the higher end models like the M1 Max or the M2 Pro. We're gonna test M2 Pro as well. Let me know if you wanna see that in the comment section below. But I was actually surprised, but I think the Mac encoders or media engines work very, very similarly what we see on NVIDIA and Intel and so on. Certain codecs are supported and certain codecs aren't. For example, some of the 420 codecs were playing back much worse than the 422 10-bit H.265, which is interesting and similar things we can see on uh, like some of the PC side. Basically, some of them are played back on hardware and some of them on software. So the ones that are played back on the media engines inside there, like the Canon R5 H.265 10-bit 422 60 frames per second footage was just buttery buttery smooth on this which is just amazing some of the intel based macs from 2019 and earlier on even the mac pro 50 grand mac pro can't play that back as well as this here that's absolutely amazing so how do you get these two mac minis for one pound well here's how I am raffling both of these away just to support the channel and just to give back for you guys something for, you know, subscribing and watching and things. So I have created a profile and the raffle competitions on raffle.com. And the reason I'm doing it apart from there is just to give a little bit of protection for you who are watching this or who want to enter this raffle or wants to have a bit of fun and put a quid in and see if you can actually win one of these. It's 100% legit. This is worldwide. Only thing you have to enter is go in the link in the description. You don't need to follow or do anything in the social media channels. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to, but you don't have to. All you have to do is go in the raffle site, enter for one pound a ticket, and that's it. This PC can be yours. And if you want to win more and get more chances to win, get two tickets and so on. So this is completely up to you. The winner of this will be drawn on my channel as well, and you'll get a notification on there as well. But this is trusted site. It's something that gives you protection and me a little bit of credibility. So you can be sure that you can win something completely hassle-free and this will be delivered to you at the doorstep for just one pound this is just crazy i'm so excited that someone's gonna get one of these or both of these mac minis for one quid or one dollar check it out in the description below if you want to build yourself best bang for book create a pc then check out the links in the description below there is build guides for you whatever budget you have from 500 dollars to five grand plus there is a pc for you where you get the best performance for your budget so highly recommend you check that out i honestly believe these are the best build guides ever for creators so check them out thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye